Welcome to the Good Friday service here at Safe House Church. Welcome online and here in person. It's going to be a very different service today. We're going to stand during the first two songs, but then we're going to sit down. And as we sit down, we're going to be led on a journey through the scriptures, through song. And that journey is going to take us to the cross. And as we're on that journey, the candles that you see here up front, the lights are going to be quenched every time that we read scriptures in the story that describe unto us the pain, the suffering, the sin, the brokenness that Christ took upon himself so that you and I could be forgiven and free today. Every time that a candle is quenched, we are on a journey until finally the last candle is going to be quenched when the light of the world became obedient unto death, giving himself completely so that you and I could be free. If you would stand with me for a moment, I want to pray with you before the worship team begins to lead us on this journey. Father, we love you today. And we love you today because you first loved us by sending your Son and allowing us to become the cause of his death, the cause of his pain, the cause of his tears, the cause of his brokenness, the cause of the blows that came down upon him, the blood that was shed. Father, you allowed us to become the cause. And you, Lord Jesus, gave yourself so freely that we today may be cleansed and set free by that blood and by that suffering. And that today a people like us may love you and may have been set free to turn to you, to trust you, to worship you, and to remember the finisher and the author of our faith the Lord Jesus who came as a lamb to be slain to carry away the sins of the world Lord I pray that you send your Holy Spirit and that as each person reads your scriptures Lord that our hearts may begin to see and understand something of the depth of the love, the willingness, the meekness, the suffering that you took a hold of so that we would not have to, Lord. God, I pray that by your Spirit you cause us to see the journey to the cross. Lord, that this Sunday our joy may grow. That this Sunday, Lord God, our joy may become a fountain. Lord, I pray that you dig deep into our hearts today. Lord God, that we may have more room to be filled with living water. Lord, send your spirit. Teach us to worship as we begin to approach the tomb. In Jesus' name. He was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us was upon him by his wounds by his wounds we are oh, he was pierced he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our sins the punishment that brought us peace was upon him 
being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spikenard. Then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, Why was this fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, and whenever you wish, you may do them good. But me, you do not have always. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint me, my body for burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will be told as a memorial to her. Then Judas Issachrit, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. So he sought how he might conveniently betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare, that you may eat the Passover? And he set out two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him. Wherever he goes in, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is the guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. So his disciples went out and came into the city and found it just as he had said to them. And they prepared the Passover. In the evening, he came with the twelve. Now as they sat and ate, Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you who eats with me will betray me. So his disciples went out, excuse me, and they began to be sorrowful and say to him, one by one, is it I? And another said, is it I? He answered and said to them, it is one of the twelve who dips with me in the dish. The son of man indeed goes just as it is written of him. But woe to the man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had never been born.
And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and when he had given things, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many assuredly I say to you I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God and when they had sung a hymn they went out to the Mount of Olives I was a rich I remember who I was I was lost, I was blind I was running out of time Sin separated The bridge was far too wide But from the far side of the castle You held me in your side
Then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even if all are made to stumble, yet I will not be. Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, that today, even this night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he spoke more vehemently, If I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said likewise. Then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James, and John with him, and he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. He went a little farther and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Then he came back and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed, and spoke the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. Then he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, with the great multitude, with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and scribes and the elders. Now his betrayer had given them a signal, saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him and lead him away safely. As soon as he had come, immediately he went up to him and said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you didn't seize me. But the scripture must be fulfilled. Then they all forsook him and fled. Now a certain young man followed him having a linen cloth thrown around his naked body. And the young man laid hold of him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. And they led Jesus away to the high priest, and with him were assembled all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes. But Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and all the council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death, 
but found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimonies did not agree. Then some rose up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But not even then did their testimony agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Do you answer nothing? What is it these men testify against you? But he kept silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him, saying to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, What further need do we have of witnesses? You've heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be deserving of death. Then some began to spit on him and to blindfold him and to beat him and say to him, Prophesy! And the officers struck him with the palms of their hands. Now as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are saying. And he went out on the porch, and a rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him again, and began to say to those who stood by, this is one of them, but he denied it again. And a little later, those who stood by said to Peter again, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean, and your speech shows it. Then he began to curse and swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. A second time, the rooster crowed. Then Peter called to mind the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And when he thought about it, he wept.
held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council, and they bound Jesus, led him away, and delivered him to Pilate. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered and said to him, It is as you say. And the chief priests accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. Then Pilate asked him again, saying, Do you answer nothing? See how many things they testify against you. But Jesus still answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Now at the feast he was accustomed to releasing one prisoner to them, whomever they requested. And there was one named Barabbas, who was chained with his fellow rebels. They had committed murder in the rebellion. Then the multitude, crying aloud, began to ask him to do just as he had always done for them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priest had handed him over because of envy. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd so that they would rather release Barabbas to them. Pilate answered and said to them again, What then do you want me to do with him whom you call the king of the Jews? So they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wanting to gratify the cloud, released Barabbas to them, and he delivered Jesus after he was scorned, after he scorned him to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him away to the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole garrison, and they clothed him with purple and twisted a crown of thorns, put it on his head, and began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! Then they struck him on the head with the reed and spat on him, and bowing the knee, they worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple, put his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him. Then they compelled a certain man, Simon, a Syrian, the father of Alexander and Rufus, as he was coming out of the country and passing by, to bear his cross. And they brought him to the place Golgotha, which is translated, place of the skull. And they gave him wine, mingled with myrrh to drink, but he did not take it. And when they crucified him, they divided his garments, casting lots for them to determine what every man should take. Now it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the inscription of his accusation was written above, the king of the Jews. With him they also crucified two robbers, one on the right and the other on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled, which says, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads, saying, Ah, you who destroyed the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests, also mocking among themselves with the scribes, said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him reviled him. Let's all stand and worship as we go into this final part of the journey to the cross.
Now when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood by when they heard that said, Look, he's calling for Elijah. Then someone ran and filled a sponge full of sour wine, put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink, saying, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. Then the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. So when the centurion who stood opposite him saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the Less, and of Joseph and Salome, who also followed him and ministered to him when he was in Galilee and many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. Now when the evening had come, because it was the preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent council member, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, coming and taking courage, went into Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate marveled that he was already dead and summoning the centurion he asked him if he had been dead for some time so when he found out from the centurion he granted the body to Joseph then he bought fine linen took him down and wrapped him in the linen and he laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock and rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, observed where he was laid. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned, and I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose, I'm forgiven, I'm forgiven, because you were forsaken. And I'm alive and well Your spirit is within me 
our forgiveness took an incredible, incredible sacrifice. And as it were tonight, as we remember the journey to the cross, we stand at a grave that has the stone rolled in front of its opening. And when I read that last verse, that felt in my heart like such a moment where it felt the story had ended. I'll read it to you again, verse 47. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, observed where he was laid. They were weak and they saw that heavy stone rolled in, in front of that place, something they could never ever make a difference in, never ever see that moved. and. As far as they could understand at the time, that was the end of their hope. Their hope that God had sent the Messiah finally to deliver His people for eternity. And as we in our hearts just stand at that closed grave tonight, I want to pray over you. Lord God, I, I ask you, Father, that you allow our hearts to become quiet, Lord God. I pray, Father, that you allow our hearts to see a measure, something, Lord God, of the indescribable, undefinable pain, suffering and grief, Father, that you went through as you surrendered your only begotten Son into the hands of sinners to allow them to become the reason for your son's death because all along father you loved us so much but in order for all of our wrong to be forgiven a payment had to be made a sacrifice needed to take place none of us appreciated it as it were it took place behind the veil where no one really saw or acknowledged or understood the pain in the heart of the Father, the sufferings and the grace of the Son. Father, I pray that as we prepare ourselves for the miracle of Easter, Lord God, I pray that you teach our hearts something of the sacrifice of Good Friday. Lord, where your worst day became our best day, Lord God, allow our hearts to understand something of that grief that we may also begin to in deeper ways become partakers of the joy the divine miracle of Easter in Jesus name Amen Amen Church there's an incredible sacrifice on Friday that that's for your forgiveness but the word teaches us that the resurrection the miracle of the resurrection is, is not for your forgiveness. Your, your forgiveness has been purchased by the blood of the cross. Christ going into the grave, accepting death as it were on your behalf. The resurrection has a different purpose. God doing an incredible miracle to bring something into your life beyond forgiveness. And and I'm excited to celebrate and explore with our hearts that joy this Sunday. Today it feels a little unfinished, amen? And that is what Good Friday feels like. But I pray that somewhere in your heart it may hurt a little bit to see what it cost the Father, what it cost the Son, that we so easily just do what we want to do and choose our plans for life. All of the mistakes we made in our past, it took so much pain. Why would we linger on that? Why would we meditate on that? Without the pain, you don't get the joy, church. Without the hurt, you don't get the appreciation from when the healing has come. And so for the Holy Spirit to show us something of the heaviness of Good Friday. It teaches us how to worship on Sunday. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, as we 
depart from here I pray that you bring to our mind and to our hearts something of an understanding a deeper understanding of what our sins have done Lord that by the time that Sunday comes around our rejoicing in the miracle of the resurrection of our Lord Lord God that it may produce something in our hearts in our worship in our homes that is worthy of a Savior Lord God that blesses your heart Father that is in accordance with your joy Father with your joy Lord Jesus Christ that was set before you and caused you to despise the shame of the cross Lord Jesus I pray that as we seek to understand something of the pain that we may so much more on Sunday understand the joy of the divine miracle that you have done Lord Jesus have your way in us and go before us as we meditate on your sacrifice this weekend in Jesus name we pray may God bless you and we hope to celebrate with you on Sunday amen <laughs>